After a season of night falls in pushbacks After the heartache of wrong turns and sidetracks The comeback
my friend Mike told me this story. When he was in fifth grade, his parents divorced. At the time, that seemed unusual to him because he didn't know many kids who had divorced parents. He went through multiple remarriages, step parents, step siblings, and going to his dad's house every other weekend. None of this is what someone dreams their childhood will be like. It was a setback in his life. And I know that, unfortunately, this is a common experience for many students. Another story is, when I was in college and got engaged, my fiance and I went to a counselor for premarital counseling. You're probably not really familiar with that right now, but it's basically a series of meetings where the counselor helps you prepare to be married. Most people prepare too much for the ceremony and not enough for the marriage. At our first meeting, he was reading through a document we had to fill out, telling a little bit about our family history, which included a mess of marriages and divorces on both sides of our families. He said, you realize that statistically, you are both set up for failure, right? Not what you wanna hear when you are planning to get married. What a major setback. Let's step into your everyday world recently. Some of you don't have your driver's license and can't go anywhere without your parents. We have all been working through various social distancing policies, rules regarding masks, and issues related to quarantine because of COVID-19. At face value, and even as you work through these on a deeper level, these are setbacks. Not being able to be in person for school, church, and celebrations is the opposite of how we were designed. God created us to be in relationship. And seeing someone through a camera and display is not the same, not even close to being in the same room together. Well, although Jesus' disciples didn't have to deal with COVID-19, and they certainly didn't have Zoom or FaceTime, one disciple in particular knows what it's like to face major setbacks in life, Peter. We are going to end in John 16, so you can find that book and chapter. But let me give you a quick overview of Peter's timeline as we approach that section. In John 13, Jesus did a very humble servant job of washing the disciples' feet to, each, to teach them about servant leadership. Peter didn't quite understand, and in an attempt to tell Jesus how loyal he would always be, Jesus told Peter that overnight he would deny knowing Jesus not once, but three times. In John 15, Jesus told the disciples how important it was to be connected to him to live the kind of life he wants us to live. In John 16, Jesus prepares for the disciples for the extremely hard times ahead so that they will be prepared, but also tells them of the promise of the Holy Spirit and what a great blessing he will be to them. Tomorrow, we will continue in John 16. Do you know people who had brokenness in their family and allowed God to transform that into a story of strength?
they got your game set match oh 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 here comes a comeback Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for your faithfulness, even though we don't deserve it. Um, and we fail you, Lord. You're still faithful to us, and you keep your promises, and you take care of us, Lord. Um, I love you, and I thank you. In your name I pray. Amen.